Hey everyone, it's Marilyn. Welcome back to KK's Quilt Studio. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about Pro Stitcher Designers and some of the neat features. Uh, we're going to talk about laying out de quilting designs onto a backdrop of your quilt top. So, you know, we haven't been able to do this in Pro Stitcher Premium. I know a lot of folks have always asked, and we've kind of done it um, in other programs, but if you don't own any of those other programs, it gets to be a little bit difficult and frustrating, and you may want to know, how can I do this and kind of get a preview of what my quilt top is going to look like. Or maybe you quilt professionally and you want to be able to give your customer an idea of what you might have in mind or what they have selected might look on their quilt top when you finish. So we're going to be talking about how I did a layout in Pro Stitcher Designer. And if you have any questions on today's video, um, if you aren't already a member of my YouTube channel, be sure and go down below and click that little red subscribe button and ring that little bell so that you get notifications anytime that I post any new videos coming up. You can always contact me at kksos at kksquiltstudio.com. I have a Facebook group called The Digital Quilting Fuse. And, of course, there's always a message board, um, groups.io. That's the address, the web address for it. No .com, no .org, just groups.io. Once you're in there, go to search and search for Digital Quilting D. And you can join our group there for some other folks that don't do Facebook. There's always an option. And you can always reach me through my website or find out about any of my other video recorded classes that you can access 24-7 at www.kksquiltstudio.com. So let's get started. Take a look at our Pro Stitcher Designer and how we go about setting up a quilt top. Okay, here we are in Pro Stitcher Designer and I have opened up a new workspace and I'm going to go to Tools first off and bring in my backdrop of my a picture of my quilt. So you'll need a quilt that's in a JPEG bitmap or I have them in PNG format and we're going to load and I'm going to select this one. This is a JPEG and open. And there's a picture of my quilt. Now I will roll back and zoom out on this. This is the quilt top that I want to be using. I'm going to go back to that backdrop tool and I'm going to select it. You'll see now that I get a little bounding box all the way around my quilt top. And then the information over here in a properties menu, um, currently it's at 42 or 8 inches by 8 inches. I want to change that to 42 to kind of give me an idea of the size that I'm going to need for my blocks. Now, just know that um, the designs that we attach to this quilt, of course, are going to differ. Um, we won't be able to save the entire quilt top designs, but it'll give me uh, an idea of placement because you always want to measure at your machine at your quilt top because even um, how good a quilter you are or maybe how good your customers are, these block sizes are always going to vary. So we're going to set up sort of a custom edge design. And so I'm going to change this to 42 by 42. and then click apply. And I wanna make this lighter, so use this lightness slider. Slide it over to lighter. And that gives us a very faint image of the background. And again, I'm going to back out using the roller on your mouse, or you can use the minus key on your keyboard. Once you have your quilt sized, you're ready to 
start applying some designs. I'm going to go back to the Home tab and open up some designs. And I've um, brought these in from, these are uh, your Handy Quilter files. I didn't use anything that you won't be able to find, either Handy Quilter or Baby Lock files. I got some uh, designs from the Triangles folder and then from um, Carly Porter. Yeah, Carly Porter's designs. I used her Irish chain block, but you'll just select a design. And let's see, I used the Feather Triangle, Triangle 1. And you look down here, and when you're going to open an existing design, it um, appears down here in the preview. Make sure that you've got your convert to outlines whenever you open up a design because you're going to be reshaping it, resizing it, and doing work with it. And then go ahead and just click open. I already have several designs open, so I will go to this one along and notice all the files I have along the bottom here. I'm going to select that feather triangle and I've got it selected. You see my box is highlighted and I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to copy and go back to my original design page and paste that in. Now I am ready to play with this design and what I'm going to do is place this one down here on my corners and I'm going to zoom in to the bottom of that quilt and go back to select and you can either resize using your grab corners here kind of reducing that down dragging it around to place it if you need to nudge it um, into place, you can always use the keyboard, hold down the control key, and use the arrows on your keyboard to move that design up, down, and around. I'm going to make this one a little bit shorter, and then move up into position. And you can always change the size of your block over here. You can change the position by selecting the XY axis. So that'll move it around as well. So there's there's several different um, places you need to be aware about relocating and resizing your block. I For this setup, I'm just going to do it real quick. And I kind of get in the habit of just sort of roughing this out. Because like I said, when you get to your quilt, you're going to have to resize it for the particular block that you're working on, um, be it very square or not out of or out of square. You always want to measure your quilt top and position of your designs at your quilt. So while we have this selected, let's go up again and copy and paste, and we'll move that over to the next triangle position. And since we've already copied it, we just need to paste it again. Okay, there we've placed three designs. Now I'm going to drop, drag my mouse, hold down that left click key and draw a boundary box around all of those. We're going to go to modify and we're gonna group those so we can use those all together. Back to tools, copy, paste, and we're going to, back to modify, we are going to rotate that left once and twice. So we rotate it 90 degrees and then place that up here along the side. Move that right into position. Go back to tools. We're going to paste again modify and do the left side, place that into position and copy that one more time. This time we're going to flip horizontally. 
So that's upside down and we're going to place that at the top of our quilt. Put that into position and then let's back out so we have a little little more of our quilt in view. The next one I uploaded was Kylie's Irish chain block. So again, tools, copy, and then go back to our quilt. And we're going to paste that design in. And it looks pretty good. Let's see. That's about the right size. Okay, so I'm going to place it in this row, which there's three. So there's three blocks across because I'm going to use my repeat tool. And there are three blocks down. Your quilt setup may be different. So again, go to Modify. Let's see. I want to stay on Tools. Repeat. Still trying to get used to all this, and that's what I want to do. Three down, three across. Click OK. So I can drag those in and place them on my quilt top. So I want to copy or paste, and I'm just going to paste because I had that block and it was about the right size. I am going to select. The, this repeat, let's grab them all, all nine blocks, I'm not getting all of them, there we have all nine together, I want to group those just in case I need to move that set around again. I'm going to go back to this one and to tools and to repeat and this time I need four blocks by four blocks so four hit the tab key on your keyboard and four and then click apply and OK that gives me a repeat and I can drag that into position so you see I can fairly quickly set up a quilt top this one looks a little bit big so let's size that down. Before we get too far, let's go to modify and group that design together in case we click off of it somehow like that. I grabbed the wrong set. Let's grab that 4x4 four four set and let's move it in position. Remember if you need to just nudge it slightly, you can use that control and the arrow keys on your keyboard. For this demonstration, I'm just going to grab the group, click, hold it, and drop it. Okay, so there's our quilt top. So you're just going to keep repeating those to set up the four corners. What about the borders? Okay, for the borders I used the wavy ribbon set and go back to tools and repeat and for this one check my notes I did 37 across and I only need one down because I just want to make a single row and you'll notice that I can't snap the designs together um, there's not an option to do that, so I need to make those designs come closer together because I don't want them separated by that much of a gap. So I'm going to use a negative value. I want them to move closer together, so hit the minus key and point mm, seven nine, I think is what I did, and then be sure to click apply and that's not quite close enough 
Let's try 0.89. And again, you make any changes, go ahead and click Apply. I want those designs to nudge together. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And I want to group those together, back to Tools, Copy, back to my layout, and Paste. And you'll see I need to resize now. Grab hold of that, zoom in, go back to my select tool, and resize this, and you can resize, like I said again, over here in your properties to get the exact height of the quilt, or you can just resize this for visual purposes, but we're going to set that in to my picture of the quilt to about where the border should be. Again, on your quilt it's it's going to be different, so that looks pretty good. We can go ahead and select that. Go back to um, actually this time let's use duplicate. So duplicate that set and you'll notice now my crosshairs have, or my uh, mouse has turned into a crosshair. We're going to go down and all you need to do now is click on where you want it to start. Okay, I want it to start there. Hold down that mouse key and drag down and look at that. I've applied it without any other cut, copy, paste, and apply again. Left click, hold it, drag it to the next point where I want it to stop and release the mouse key. Again, click, hold, stop, and down. Okay, I'm almost there. I've almost designed a whole quilt. All, all done. All I need to do is select my designs for the corners, apply them the same way, all four corners, apply my triangles up here in the corners, and this is what I came up with. So grab a picture of your favorite quilt or the qu next quilt that you're going to be working on and come up with a design layout, play around with different things and see how you like it and see how easy it is to do a quilt layout, your quilting plan for your next quilt top in Pro Stitcher Designer. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Give me a big thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.